So in a previous video, we came up with a definition for the derivative at a point, and that it helps us get the slope of the curve at a particular x value. And that, that rule was this. f of x, uh, I'm sorry, f prime of a, the derivative of the curve, the derivative of the function at x equals a, or the slope of the tangent line at x equals a, there's many different ways to phrase it, is equal to the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus a, oh, f of x minus f of a, that's what I meant, divided by x minus a. And so that was a useful definition if we wanted the slope of the curve at a given x value. So I give you, an, I give you a function, you know, f of x equals x squared, and I say find the, the derivative at x equals 2. And so you plug into this definition, you simplify the limit, you get an answer. That answer is a number, and it tells me the slope of the curve at x equals 2. Now the disadvantage to that is if I asked you, find the slope of the curve, or find the derivative, at x equals 2, 5, 7, and 10. The problem with this formula is you'd have to apply it, you know, three or four times, and that's a lot of work, right? It would be nice if instead of Instead of that, we could just use some definition, apply it once, and get a rule where we could just plug in those values into the rule to get the derivative immediately. And so that's what we're going to uh, we're going to derive here. And so the picture is going to look very much the same, but what's different is the variables I use. So normally I would say, okay, we want the derivative at x equals a, a, a given x value. But here I'm going to let that be the variable. Okay, so the, the point of tangency is what's going to vary, and that's the, the whole reason why we're going to be able to get a function out of this, not just a, not just a value. And now what I'm going to do is um, the, conventional, the conventional variable that we use to represent the distance I go out to get to my next point, because remember, we've got to make a secant line here in this diagram, and that is h. So if that distance there is h, this value is x plus h. And again, if you know numeric, if you're not, if you don't buy that, just pretend that x is six and my distance h is three. This clearly would be the point nine, which is six plus three. And all that means that my output here would be f of x plus h. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as usual, draw in my secant line and write an expression for the slope of this secant line. So the slope of the secant line is change in y over change in x. So so my change in y is the difference between these two y values. Okay, but that's just f of x plus h minus f of x. And the difference in between my, uh, my change in my x is the difference between x plus h and, and x, which is just h. So, so you can write that as so the slope would therefore be change in y and I'm going to divide by now I'm going to I'm going to write this as x plus h minus x right again if this is a 9 and that's a 6 then the difference the distance between them or my change in x is just 9 minus 6 I'm going to write that just so that we're reminded that we're looking at a slope okay and so as usual, what we do is we write down write down our expression f of x plus h minus f of x divided by x plus h minus x. Now that is the slope of this secant line, but what we do is, in order to get the slope of the tangent line, 
what we do is we start to move, we start to close the distance between x and x plus h. So as we do that, we get these secant lines. I'll do them in blue. We get these secant lines. Right? So what's happening? What, you know, what, what would what variable would change to cause this distance here to, to close? Well, we would want our h to start becoming smaller and smaller, right? So we would want our h to go to zero. And so that is why this definition becomes the limit as h goes to zero. Because as h goes to zero, those secant lines start to become that tangent line. And this is what we call the derivative of f with respect to x. Now notice I didn't say at the point, you know, at x equals a or at x equals b. That's because this is this definition, when you apply it, it doesn't produce a number. It produces a, a, a function. A function that gives you the the slope of the curve at any given x value, and so you don't normally see it like this. Normally, um, we subtract those x's, and so you'll most most often see it in this form. But it is at the heart of calculus, differential calculus. It is the you know the arguably the most important definition that you'll come across. So you do want to know it. And when I do, I'll do some examples in future videos to show you exactly how it works. Um, but just keep in mind that it produces a it produces a a function. And even though that the this this difference quotient here doesn't look like slope anymore because of that you know there's just an h at the bottom, um, it really just comes from that denominator h really comes from subtracting x plus h uh, mi uh, minus x. Okay, so the, this, the idea of slope really is still in there, even though you can't see it in the definition. So know this formula for sure.